Satnam beautiful, welcome to my channel. If you're meeting me for the first time, my name is Melanie Santos. I am a multidisciplinary sacred artist who teaches about the mind-body-spirit connection. And I'm a kundalini yoga teacher who teaches kundalini yoga from the perspective of someone who used it to heal her mental health issues, to regenerate my aura, to strengthen my electromagnetic field, and to restore my nervous system after having experienced debilitating depression and anxiety for most of my life. I now get to share the intricate and amazing technologies of Kundalini Yoga to help the world reintegrate with the fact that we're not just human beings, that we are energetic beings, that we are sensitive beings, that we are spirits incarnate. In this video, I'm going to share with you one of my absolute favorite and most powerful kriyas, the Lion's Paw Kriya with Breath of Fire. This one is near and dear to me because this was the Kriya and meditation that I did for my very first 40-day sadhana. If you're not familiar with the word or the concept of sadhana, sadhana in Sanskrit means daily spiritual practice. And in Kundalini Yoga tradition and Kundalini Yoga culture, we practice 40-day sadhanas as a way to sort of integrate and show our commitment to our spirits, to our souls, to strengthen our spiritual connections, but to also strengthen our mind and body as well. Doing a 40-day sadhana with a particular kriya or meditation like this one, like I'm going to explain, really integrates, works on the body, works on the energetic meridians that are being activated through that particular kriya or meditation, and sets a powerful mental, physical, and energetic intention based on what that kriya does. Whenever somebody comes to me, a friend, a family member, a client comes to me and they share that they're in some sort of a hole or a rut or they need to pick themselves up, I always recommend that they do their Googles and choose a Kundalini Yoga Kriya or meditation that they can do from anywhere from 3 to 7 to 11 minutes all the way up to 31 minutes, all the way up to two hours if they're experienced to really set that mental, physical, and spiritual intention to truly work on the energetic meridians that may need recalibration. This kriya, the lion's paw kriya with breath of fire, is one of those kriyas that is perfect for recalibrating the mind, body, and spirit in a very short amount of time. Let's get into the science and the energetics of it. Number one, this kriya is working through our electromagnetic field or our aura. Our aura extends around our physical body and it acts as not only our protective layer, our electromagnetic layer, uh, protecting us from outside energies impacting us, but also our like satellite layer, our field that communicates our energy for us. We need to be energetically cleansing and protecting ourselves daily. And this is a really beautiful, really powerful way to do that in terms of Kundalini Yoga. So the Lion's Paw Kriya is very powerful in the way that it's going to restore the electromagnetic field and recalibrate the electromagnetic field. Now I'm showing you the exact movement that the Lion's Paw Kriya incorporates. We're going to get into the specifics of it because literally everything that we do in Kundalini Yoga means something and I really want you to understand why these Kriyas and meditations are so powerful, both spiritually and scientifically. And so the Lion's Paw Kriya is called Lion's Paw because we are making a lion grip with our hands and tensing up our fingers as best as we possibly can. We're starting with our arms out this is doing a couple of things. The arms are extensions of our heart chakra, our heart that has its own electromagnetic field to it, which is just so powerful. When we tense up our arms like this and we tense up our fingers, we are also tensing up the energetic meridians in the arms and in the hands. We, as electromagnetic beings, as energetic beings, are not just physical bodies with veins and arteries and all these types of organs, but we also have 72,000 what we call nadis, or energetic meridians in our body. When we tense up the fingers, we are tensing up those energetic meridians in the body, awakening and activating certain aspects of our energetic field. 
not only is this kriya stimulating certain energetic aspects of us to restore again our aura and our electromagnetic field so that we can both protect and project the energy that we want to call into our life but it's also stimulating certain actual aspects of our physical body specifically in the brain this kriya powerfully stimulates the pineal and pituitary glands in the brain the pineal gland which we may know as the third eye part of our chakra system is super important in the body because not only does it regulate our sex and thyroid hormones but it also regulates certain brain activity energetically is known as the seat of the soul because it helps us see beyond our 3d world and our pituitary gland which is often referred to as the master gland because it regulates so many of those important glands in our bodies like our adrenal glands which we hear a lot about uh, in this age of nervous system regulation our adrenal glands our reproductive glands our thyroid glands and it also produces hormones that influence many essential aspects of our body from blood pressure to ovulation to bone growth now, when we pair the movement of the lion's paw kriya with breath of fire, we have a powerful concoction. Let's count in this video how many times I say powerful. <laughs> now, I'm not going to get into a whole instruction on the specifics of breath of fire. I have a separate video on that that I do suggest that you watch on your own time, especially if you are a beginner or if you're not a beginner, but you feel like you're not doing it right because it's one of those really powerful there goes the powerful word again really powerful breaths that is truly life-changing when you do it correctly but when you pair the lion's paw kriya movement with breath of fire that i will share some of the benefits with you that on its own is just so cleansing restorative um breaks up the calcification in your lungs both physically and energetically which is really important because the lungs is where we carry grief increases oxygen delivery to the brain adjusts our subtle energy and our electromagnetic fields adjusts our nervous system shifting us from a sympathetic to a parasympathetic nervous system when we pair together the movement with the breath we have again a powerful concoction that will set you straight and allow you to navigate the world with clarity mental physical and spiritual clarity that will allow you to be subtle in a world that honestly encourages the opposite this is a beautiful potent and short meditation that's going to help you balance your masculine and feminine energies it's going to help you remember who you are remember your power take back your power especially in an age where in the age of late state capitalism right in an age where everything around us is seeking to help us forget our power so that we can try to buy our power back and so I'm sharing all of this because I want you to work with this Kriya from the perspective of not only personal recalibration but also collective recalibration now let's get into a three-minute practice together now, I'm gonna instruct you as I would if we were in a live class so just follow along start off by rubbing your hands together telling the mind body and spirit that you're ready to meditate Put your hands in prayer position, thumbs touching your breastbone, eyes closing gently, spine elongating, chin just slightly tucked to just make everything strong and long. At this point, we would tune in with the Adi Mantra and the Mangala Charin. I'm not going to tune in in this video, but I have a separate video on what to know before Kundalini Yoga class. At this point, if you're practicing with me, pause the video and tune in on your own. I see a lot of people instructing and not urging their students to tune in and tune out. Please make sure that you tune in and tune out. It's almost like starting and ending a physical prayer. And we're going to do three minutes together. Extend the arms out parallel to the ground, palms facing up, and grip the air. Almost like you're gripping the air, but do it uncomfortably so that you have these really strong lion's paw with the intention of, again, tearing through your aura, removing anything that doesn't serve you, that doesn't serve your highest and greatest good or the highest and greatest good of all. And as we're going through, we're going to add breath of fire. And I do want to say a disclaimer. Uh, if you're on your period, if you are pregnant, if you have 
cardiac conditions or you have spinal disorders, please do not do breath of fire. Replace it with a long, deep breath, inhaling into the navel and exhaling and retracting the navel back to the spine. And you can do that with the breath as well. You can go back to doing regular breath of fire with the movement uh, once you are done with your period. I'm gonna use my phone as a timer. Let's get in position. And I wanna remind us that when we are doing the movement for the lion's paw kriya, that we are alternating the position of the hands, the left going in the front and the right going in the front. And this should be happening over the head. I'm gonna course correct myself. My hair is pretty high right now. So I wanna make sure to do it right above the head. What we're trying to reach is the crown chakra. And I'm also gonna turn my plants because I don't wanna hurt her in the process. But we wanna be right above the head and going all the way out parallel to the ground as we are doing this. Lastly, our eye gaze should be closed and looking up, gazing up at the third eye. Setting the timer, arms out, parallel to the ground, and let's begin. Now, as we move through this meditation, you'll notice that my breath is very steady, controlled, and forceful. It's important to remember that everyone's breath pace is different, especially if you are new to this practice. Follow along at your own pace and capacity. It is not about matching my breath exactly, but finding a rhythm that works for you. In the meditation, you'll notice that my breath will shift. Take this as a reminder to always breathe to your capacity. Remember, the discomfort is not the goal. Our aim is to be thorough in our breathing and our movement, ensuring that we're performing the meditation correctly and mindfully. Keep going. Completing the meditation, hold the posture right above your head. Inhale deeply, hold and suspend your breath. We're gonna engage Mulaband or do what we call pulling the root lock, inhaling deeply, holding and suspending the breath, squeezing the anus, the sexual organs, and the navel, slightly tucking the chin and allowing the Kundalini energy to raise from the base of the spine all the way through the spine to the top of the head. When you are ready, you may exhale deeply. Complete this a couple of more times until you're ready to exhale deeply. Sweep your hands through your aura, bringing them back down to the lap. Hands in Gyan Mudra, index finger connecting with your thumb while you focus on your heart center, letting the energies recalibrate within you.
to complete the entire practice, we would tune out by chanting Sat Nam, Truth is my identity, Truth is my name, chanting a long Sat and a short Nam. How did that feel for you? I am a little sweaty right now because I'm teaching this from the hottest summer day possible, but I feel so invigorated. I feel so energized. I'm so grateful that I was able to share this technology with you, this kriya, this meditation with you. I encourage you to let me know how you're feeling in the comments. I also encourage you to leave any questions in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them as quickly as possible. But thank you so much for popping onto my channel to learn about the potent and powerful aspects of this amazing kriya and meditation. I hope that I'll see you here again soon. Peace.